Hi, my name is Savas and I'm a radiologist working in Africa. My main interests are tuberculosis and HIV in children. And I'm here to give you a few lectures to help you interpret imaging that you take in the field. This is one of Sav's seven minute snippets and that's what I used to look like and not what I look like anymore. This particular lecture is about diagnosing pulmonary TB in children but particularly for using the lateral chest radiograph. I'm hoping that those of you who are working on the ground as clinicians will be able to use this to help you make a stronger diagnosis maybe while waiting for cultures or other tests to come back. And I'm hoping to help you make more definitive diagnoses this way. So let's get cracking and get you built up to this size. I'm going to show you a normal lateral chest radiograph in a child just so you get familiar. This here is the trachea and there's a couple of vessels branching off. I know people in England don't take the lateral chest x-ray anymore, but in situations where TB is a problem, we use this as an everyday tool. And every time you ask for a chest x-ray, you get both the frontal and a lateral. You better be able to use it then because there's a radiation dose. So here's a bit of an anatomy lesson to help you out. Now the structures you see here are the right main pulmonary artery, the left main pulmonary artery, and the aortic arch. I'm not really asking you to be able to identify them. What I want you to understand is that they make a horseshoe, an upside down horseshoe, below which are a bunch of diverging vessels. I'll show you this in an imaging form, but just first to bring to mind that a lymphadenopathy is called a donut on a lateral chest radiograph. I didn't invent the sign. This has been described by Caffey and other old time radiologists. And we persist to use this sign. So that's the upside down horseshoe. This means not that you have to identify the horseshoe, but it means that you shouldn't call any lymphadenopathy in this region. Even if there is lymphadenopathy, we cannot be sure because it looks no different from the normal vessels. For those of you who don't know what a horseshoe is, this is a horseshoe, a metallic structure used on a horse's hoof. I put in an octopus because the vessels extending below the horseshoe look like tentacles. They basically diverge in all directions, including in and out of the page. The lymphadenopathy you will see on a lateral x-ray simplistically looks like a donut. And that's for non-Americans who don't use uh, donuts as a food source. That's what the donut will look like on a lateral chest radiograph. And that's what a real picture looks like of a donut. I'm going to show you with the arrow. And it's really the bottom bits that you're confident represent lymphadenopathy. Let's look at some examples. So, here's a donut. And I want to explain to you using CT scanning what makes up the donut so you can really believe me. So this is a CAT scan. You don't really have to know how to interpret this. But just to note that blood vessels and the heart are bright because we've injected intravenous contrast, which means lymphadenopathy, which is here and here, does not take up contrast and can be seen separate from the vessels. Now, what I've done for you is I've taken a coronal reconstruction through there and another one through there to show you the lymphadenopathy sitting here in the bifurcation of the trachea and sitting here at the left hilum. And then... I've taken sagittal reconstructions through where the lymphadenopathy is. So now you have two images, one which is mid-sagittal, demonstrating subcarinal lymphadenopathy corresponding to this image, and one which is parasagittal and represents these lymph nodes which are at the hilum. If you look back at your lateral chest radiograph, you'll see how these two lumps of lymphadenopathy make up your oval donut sign. It's pretty easy. There's your donut and there's your donut sign. So just to show you that life's not that simple and that there are variations in life, I've added a bunch of other food groups a lot healthier than the donut. That is the actual donut. Sometimes donuts are not completely round because someone may have sat on the box probably an American policeman. I've just added that in so you're all comfortable with what an American policeman looks like. You see he's eating a donut 
That's the people whose major food source is donuts, and you can see what it does to their outline and their silhouette. Of course, not everything's a donut. Sometimes it looks like a bunch of grapes, maybe a watermelon, maybe a bunch of cherries. It's just to show you if you're comfortable with where the normal blood vessels should be, and you see soft tissue dense lamp lumps below this, then you can call them fatinopathy. That's the end of the lecture. I'm not telling you to only use the lateral chest radiograph. I'm telling you to use it in conjunction with the frontal chest radiograph. And you should have seen that seven minute snippet prior to this x-ray. And you should use the two x-rays in conjunction. Lastly, I'm not claiming that chest x-ray is the most accurate means of making the diagnosis. But what chest x-rays can do is at the time of seeing the patient, they can help the clinician have a strong suspicion so treatment can be started while awaiting other tests to come back. It's also important to note that a lot of children do not produce sputum and samples are sometimes difficult to get even when you have advanced testing like expert or rapid culture mechanisms. So as far as I'm concerned, the chest x-ray including the lateral continue to be useful tools and they continue to be recommended by the World Health Organization. So good luck, go and get them and make those diagnoses.